So to really become a short game genius, you need to use your different clubs for different situations. Don't fall into the trap of being one of those guys who has his favorite club and tries to use it everywhere. It doesn't fit. If the flag is down at the front of the green, what I'm going to do is take my five iron, use my same technique, and allow the less lofted club to give me more roll. I don't want to be making massive movements trying to whack my 7 iron where I shouldn't be using it. If I was going to the pin, my 5 iron is going to be too hot. I won't be able to hit it that softly. And if it's very close to me, what I want you to do is experiment using your sand wedge. If you have very fast greens or you're very close to the flag, it's nice to be able to make an aggressive stroke and still not hit the ball very far. Watch this one. If I'm in a pressure situation, I don't want to be hitting anything too fiddly. Make a positive stroke, use your sand iron, but the key to all of this, you must experiment with your clubs to find out how they react to you. So here I find myself in a different situation. I've missed the green, I've missed the fringe, and now I'm into the second cut. The rough is not as manicured here, and I'm a little bit concerned that if I try to putt it, it'll roll offline. It's too far away for me to use my little chip and putt. So what I'm going to do now is use a completely different technique, the chip and run or chip number two. What I'm going to do is carry the ball onto the green, let it run out like a putt. Watch me hit one and then we'll learn how to do it together. You can see the motion looks different, and it is completely different, which is what we'll explain to you now. My objectives here are completely different. What I am looking to do is to be able to land the ball onto the green and really let it run out towards the hole. To do that, I'm almost trying to create a top spin motion. I don't want to have the ball spinning, I don't know how that's going to work. Very important to get this top spin roll. And basically, what you're going to be doing is using your arms and your shoulders in a more rotary motion to help you get that top spin roll so that your ball will run out to the hole as opposed to stop dead. So how do I create this top spin action? The secret lies in the motion of my shoulders and of my arms. What I'm trying to do is allow the club face to open up in the backswing and then I use my arms and my shoulders rolling through to shut the club face down. Watch me do one. Use your rotary arms and rotary chest to create the top spin roll. Before we get started on learning the motion, I want to get you set up correctly. A couple of key elements. Get the ball about level with your sternum so that your hands are ahead of the ball. This will help you to hit down onto the ball, which as we know, must happen for the ball to come up into the air. 
Also, with your arms, don't grip up at the top of the club. It's very difficult for me to control bent arms. Let your arms hang and grip it where it's comfortable. So you can see that my arms are pretty straight and also that my arms are connected into my body. I need to link up my shoulders and arms if this thing is going to work. Now the alignment for this shot is a little different. I'm going to aim my club face at the hole, but I'm going to aim my body to the left. You can see that my shoulders clearly aim to the left of the target. The reason for this is that I want you to, to be able to turn through. If you're standing too square, you've got too much work to do, that's too much motion and too difficult to control. Club at the target, body aiming to the left, roll it open and turn through. Aiming and address are not particularly exciting, but if you want to be successful with these shots, you really need to make sure your basic fundamentals are correct. Now with this motion, it's very important that you coordinate your shoulders and your arms. Many disasters happen when the arms come away, you try to guide it. Have a look at this exercise. I'm going to take my glove, put it under my left arm, and that throughout my swing, that pressure is always going to stay constant. There's no way that this glove is coming out of here. If it loses and you drop it on the floor, you know your swing is not working correctly. Now another common error that can make you make mistakes in this area is to stop using your shoulders and try to help it with your hands. Most destructive shot in golf. It's not going to get you on the green and more than likely you'll have another chip to try to accomplish what you should have accomplished first. Have a look at this exercise. Club down on the ground and what I'm going to do is to make sure that I hit down. If I hit up, that's not going to do me any good at all. So, lay the club down, give yourself about five inches, take your address position and it's roll it up, roll it down. Roll it up, roll it down, Simple. We're now in a situation where I'm just in front of the green. What I'm trying to do here is to figure out which club is going to be perfect for this particular situation. You should be thinking, if you can, always to try to keep the ball on the ground. All these fancy lob shots that the tour players hit, they're fine, but they've practiced those a few hundred thousand times. If you don't spend all day at the golf course, this is a much safer way to play this shot. I'm going to use my pitching wedge for this particular situation. What I'm trying to do, keep the ball close to the ground, let it pitch just before the green, and then let it run up to the hole like a putt. So I'm now in a situation where my ball lies about 25 yards from the green. 
the fairways are quite tight, ordinarily you might automatically think I should reach for my sand wedge. What I'm now going to use is my 8 iron and I'm going to show you how you can still keep the ball on the ground and get good control. So remember, don't always just reach for the aerial route. There are other options and sometimes they're a lot easier to play. Okay. I haven't really hit a bad shot. I'm only 20 yards from the flag, but I've missed the green, missed the fringe, missed the first cut of, of rough and I'm in the deep hay. What we're going to talk about now is the high cut up shot. The most difficult shot in golf but if you can pull it off the sexiest shot in golf. Okay, for this shot I'm looking to get the ball up as high as I can to get it to land as softly as I can. Very difficult to control the roll out of here. I've selected my most lofted wedge, which is in my case a 60 degrees wedge, the lob wedge. Let me just take you through the technique here so that you will be able to execute these kind of shots under even the greatest of pressures. Now to play these high soft shots, you really must pay attention to how you take your grip and how you address the ball. In this situation, I want to use the most amount of loft that I possibly can to give the ball the highest softest flight. When you take your grip on a normal shot, you're always conscious to keep the club face square and then get your hands into a neutral position. Completely different for this shot. I want you to start with it open then take your grip so that the club face is open in your hands. Don't make the mistake of taking your grip, twisting your arms open, because what's going to happen at impact is that that will roll back shut, decreasing the loft, and you'll hit it a lot further than you planned. Club face open, take your grip, So when I'm taking my address and I've got the club face so open, I know that I must make a corresponding change in my alignment to offset the very open club face that I know I need to have. I'm going to aim my body the corresponding amount to the left. So my body alignment neutralizes out the very open club face. Set the club face, take your grip, Aim off to the left and then let it go. So remember, if you're going to open up the club face that dramatically, you must aim and swing to the left. If you do those three things, you'll be in good shape. Make sure you understand what you're trying to do at address. I see many players set up for a bad shot before they've even started their motion. Address position like this, hands behind, weight behind, it makes you feel like you're going to be able to hit the ball up in the air, but it actually works the complete opposite way. I want you nice wide base so that you can brace your legs, 
weight ahead of the ball, hands ahead of the ball, and from here, you know what to do. So make sure that you pay attention to the fundamentals. There's no point going out to practice all of these different lies around the green if your address position is handicapping you from the very beginning. Go through the notes, check yourself in a the mirror, then get to work. Anybody can do this. It just takes the right technique. To be able to play the ball out of this deep rough, I really have to change the shape of my swing. In all of the other shots, you're looking to get a shallow bottom of the, of the swing so that you can sweep the ball away. Much more of a U-shaped swing. In this stuff, I need to hit down very aggressively with a very steep angle of attack, and I need to make my swing much more V-shaped. So how am I going to do that? One of the problems that most amateurs have in this area is that they keep their wrists too stiff. From here, I'm always going to be coming in shallow, and that gives you the inevitable ugly shots that you can sometimes hit. Make sure that in your backswing, you aggressively hinge your wrists. I'm looking for a 90 degrees angle between your left arm and the shaft by the time your left arm is parallel to the ground. aggressive hinge and then aggressive hit down. Because you've got so much loft, you really need to get your swing speed up so that you can dig the ball out of the cabbage. Let me show you one. Let it hinge up and then release it down into the grass. Don't be afraid to be fairly aggressive. You need to hit these ones hard to get enough momentum to get the ball up in the air. It looks dangerous, but with a little practice, it's very effective. Now, you've seen me set up the game. What I'm trying to do in the short game is I'm trying to give myself exercises which will simulate the skills that I'm going to need when I'm playing in a tournament. Practicing distance control is vital. There are loads of games that you can play, so get creative, or have a look at the list that I've prepared for you later on in the sequence. What I'm going to do now is work on my distance control and see if I need to brush up my short game. I think you guys should probably do a little bit of the same thing. All right, well, I found myself in the bunker, which is a potential blow-up area for many amateurs. The reason, I think, is that amateurs are trying to hit the ball first to get it out, 
And in bunkers, what we're trying to do is to make sure that we get into the sand, and it's the sand through momentum that carries the ball out onto the green. So this is the only shot where if you do tend to hit it fat, it'll actually work. I'm going to show you how to build up a technique so that if you do get into the traps, no matter your situation, you will be able to get out. Many amateurs will try to help the ball up and what happens is they do hit into the sand but they hit in so much before the sand that they're actually coming up through impact. And what I want to have happen is I want the blade of the club coming in behind the ball, under the ball, so you can see how the sand builds up as a cushion between the club face and the ball. And now as this gets deeper, the ball will sit on this bed of sand and what I'm trying to do is blast the sand out onto the green. If I can do that, I know the ball will travel in the same direction. So remember, focus your attention on hitting into the sand and just don't worry about the ball because you don't need to have it there anyway. Now because my task in the bunker is completely different than any other area of the game, there will be some different areas that you need to focus on so that you can be as successful as possible. And the first one is going to be the grip. We will really stress the importance of getting a good grip and a neutral grip when we're talking about your full swing, but in the bunkers, you can afford to really get a much stronger grip, especially this left hand. And the reason for that is that that will help you to hold the face square through impact so that the shutting motion, which naturally occurs in your golf swing, which is devastating to a bunker shot, is eliminated. Now when I'm taking my address position in the bunker, I'm going to modify how I set up to the ball because of the specific task that I have ahead. If I'm out in the fairway, I need my legs to stabilize me, but I also need them to be able to support the weight shift and the motion of my body. In the bunkers, I want to make my legs anchors so that I will never have any lateral movement at all. What I'm going to do is take a wider than normal stance and you can see I really push down on my legs. This allows me to support all of the weight of my body on these very powerful quad muscles so that when I go to hit the ball there's no danger of me sliding into the ball which is very destructive or of just not having enough support. So when you get into the bunker make sure and make it a part of your routine that you widen your stance sit down in your legs, really keep your rear end low, get your center of gravity down there, because this action really comes from arms and upper body. Your legs shouldn't move. As with many things in golf, the fundamentals like ball position and aiming are the most important. The motion is definitely the most fun and giving the ball a hit is great, but if you can be disciplined enough to build solid fundamentals, it'll make your shot making much more exciting. Have a look at how I'm going to address and align for a bunker shot. The straight line to the hole is this way. But as we said, with the open face, we need to offset the alignment of the body. If this is a straight line to the hole, I need to aim my body significantly to the left. So my face is going to aim to the right. I set up square to my aiming marker and you can see certainly a good seven yards left. Now the other important thing is Make sure you don't fall into the habit of trying to hit to the hole. Once you've set up your shoulder line, you always, always swing along your shoulder line. Now watch me do one. Club face to the right, body aiming left. 
I'm going to swing it out on my body line and hit through on my body line. Here we go. So now the test for this exercise is that my divot should exactly match my body alignment. So what I'm going to do, take my club, put it through the middle of my divot, and you can see that these two lines match up. Now in this exercise, if your divot's going at the hole, then you need a little more practice. We now need to talk about where does the swing motion come from? It certainly doesn't come from your body motion. Your body is an anchor. And the engine for these shots comes basically from your wrists, your hands, and your arms. I need to hit down into the sand. To hit down with the blade, I need to get the club head up into the air. The way that I do this is to aggressively hinge my wrists and you can do that as early as you want in your backswing. Make sure that before you start down your wrists are fully hinged. The higher you can get the club up the easier it is to drop into the back of the ball and the more successful your bunker shots. This is what we're trying to do. Hinge it up, let it release into the sand and let it release through. If you can do those elements, you're going to have a really good chance of hitting some fabulous bunker shots. Now if that looks like one of your shots, and I see this pretty frequently, that's way too much effort. Some guys get into the bunker and they think, well, I've really got to get down in there, and they tomahawk down, and you could actually almost fall into this divot. That's not what we're talking about. I want to hit down, but I need to get shallow divots so that I can control the flight of the ball and the distance of the ball. The only way to really master this is to practice. So. I am looking forward to seeing you hit some shots where I'm hitting down with control. So I do want you to hit down into the sand, but it doesn't have to be earth excavation. You can still hit down into the sand, get shallow divots so that you can control your distance. The best way to practice that is just to come into the bunker with no balls to start with and practice getting your timing right so that you can hit the sand where you want and get the right amount of sand. If you can do those two things, then you will start to become a demon out of the bunkers. All right, if you frequently hit thin shots or fat shots out of the bunker, this is going to be a fabulous drill for you to work on. It's very difficult to be able to control exactly the point where you're going to hit into the sand. What I'm going to do is I'm going to draw a line in the sand, place a ball about two inches in front of it. Now my exercise is I'm not going to focus on where the ball is. I'm going to focus on this point where I want to hit into the sand. I make my setup and just a nice relaxed practice swing. And you can see the start of my divot was exactly on the line. I'm going to have one more go. And now I think I should be ready. Focus exactly where my club head's going to hit into the sand. And if I can do that, I will always be able to get the ball out. So if you're inconsistent, a little thin, a little fat, make sure you spend the time working 
on being able to control the point where the club head hits into the sand. If you can do that, you should be able to get out and out of the bunkers and away from all the trouble.